Hi everyone, welcome back to this video and in this video I will be giving you some information on the difference between a user journey and a user flow. So I have taken a video on what are user journeys and why build one and some points to keep in mind when building a user journey map. So if you haven't got see that video you can click on the links given in the description box and without any delay let's get into these differences. So a user journey, it's an overall journey of a persona. So you, as you, have, you can visualize a user journey map, it's just an overall journey of a persona which is a user of the system. When you look at the user flow, it is a journey of the persona by navigating through the app. So it's more system specific where you are able to visualize the journey of a user within the application by navigating through various um, uh, pages and modules in order to complete their tasks. So this is the first difference. The second one is a user journey is independent. So when you collect requirements from the users, it's just that that you need and your prior your knowledge that you gather in order to understand and put down a user journey. It's not dependent on a user flow. So when you look at a user flow, it's depend, it depends on the user journey because unless you understand what is the user's journey, only then you will be able to you know, design a flow within the system that matches to the user's journey. You cannot mix it up which will create a lot of confusions. So therefore it depends on a user journey. So based on the user journey, that's what is kept as a base and the user flow is constructed. The next one is it is built at the requirement elicitation phase. So as I said, when you gather requirements, when you discover certain requirements with prior knowledge and when you elicitate requirements, that's where you start to understand the user journey and what they require. So it's at that stage that the user journey gets built. And if you look at the user flow, it's built in the design phase. So when teams have to actually sit down and uh, you know, visualize how the user is going to navigate through the system first. That's where a user flow comes in hand. And the next difference is it is built to understand and visualize the steps, user steps to complete a goal. So the main aim of a user journey map is to help teams visualize and understand how the user completes certain steps in order to complete a goal. And when you look at the user flow, it's built to understand the flow of the user and their experience. So when a user flow is put down, you'll be able to understand how a user is going to navigate through the application, whether it's going to be easily understandable or whether it's going to be a lot of learning for them in order to navigate through the system. Even the user experience is also, you know, you can... Um, you'll be able to come to know how the user experience might be with the user flow map. And the next one is it's used by product teams, sales and marketing and other stakeholders to realize the product value and also for consensus. So a product owner or a business analyst will definitely be communicating with various stakeholders. There can be internal and external stakeholders to the project the business analyst or the product owner is working on. So there are times when there is confusions as to what exactly the, so what solutions are we providing to the customer. They might be having a different idea about the product on, uh, altogether. So these user journey maps act as a very good base in order for business analysts to convey the solution, convey who are the users that we the um, product is targeting and what type of solution it's providing to the users. So it helps everyone realize the product value and realize the flow, uh, not the flow, the journey of the user and the goal and also to come to a same page which is a consensus and agree upon. So that's with the user journey and a user flow, it's used by the product and design teams to design communications, for design communications. So basically, it's not just at the um, XD side, the UI part of um, the story that people are, you know, they have the um, responsibility of designing the flow. Always as a business analyst, also you should be able to uh, understand the users and also you should be able to provide inputs and feedbacks about how the journey and the flow of the user should be within the application. So in order to communicate to designers, 
there needs to be a, some communication platform or some base that has to be set in order that you can communicate in the same language as the designers as to what are your ideas. So that's where a user flow comes into picture which helps designers and business analysts of the product teams to you know understand and to update and to you know tweak the user flow within the application so that's what user flow is and the last difference is it is a high level flow so user journeys it's very high level and doesn't aim, include a lot of technicality into it you will find that there's just the flow and there are various steps that you know tasks that are needed to complete a particular activity whereas when you look at the user flow it's a very detailed flow with all navigations, validations, and conditions, etc. So when you look at a user journey, it's a very um, business-oriented um, uh, map where even the customers and a non-technical person also can understand. But when it comes to a user flow, of course, some user flows are very um, um, base and it's very... Um, simple there are user flows also that are very complex also given the system size and what type of a solution that is being built so it's in the user flow that you'll find a lot of validation criteria conditions etc so these are the differences between a user journey and a user flow so if you like this video please do give this video a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do subscribe to this channel and also do share your feedbacks thank you